there's two main influences from, from the time of, of Morbid Tales. One is, is um, the new wave of British heavy metal, which at that time was the revolution in, in heavy metal. And uh, I think, visually speaking, which had a huge impact on our work, uh, it, it pro was probably the work of H.R. Giger, who at that time we approached. We felt a close kinship to, to his kind of work, because he was basically the only artist in the country that was, in our viewpoint, as extreme as we were, you know, in, in approaching uh, artistic expression. Yeah. His art expressed exactly what we were That's trying right. to express. He, yeah, we, we, looked, yeah. we looked at his paintings and his, his sketches and everything. We, we, we found ourselves in that. And we were struggling to do the same with our music. And of course, like Martin says, we looked at him as a genius far above us. But we were like, this is exactly what we want to do musically. It's really hard to pinpoint it down because, I mean, we were just like bursting with ideas and, and visions, you know. I mean, we were inspired by the writings of uh, Robert E. Howard, H.P. Lovecraft, uh, Elifa Slavy, Alistair Crowley. All of that is already worked in, you know, with in, in, into the lyrics of Morbid Tales, you know. And, of course, a lot of it we started already to elaborate on with, uh, with Hellhammer, you know, in the early days prior to Celtic Frost. Uh, prior to Morbid Tales, you know. I mean, you can see the, the inspiration of, uh, of, of Crowley and Magic, you know, in, in the haptogram on, on the front cover of Morbid Tales, you know. I mean, like, there were so many inspirations. There were so many, so, so like you might say, influences already outside of the music world at that time, you know. The Omen score was a big one, very much so. The Goblin scores for the Dario Argento movies. And, and this is also where some of these ideas, you know, for like Dance Macabre and, and, and uh, the intro, you know, Human, and uh, the, the pieces that we worked into some of the songs, like Nocturnal Fear, you know, came about. You can go to a record store, you, you know, and, and go like, oh, have you got the latest Iron Maiden record? They would have been like, Iron who? You know, that was at a time when like the, the first two Iron Maiden records came out and nobody heard of Iron Maiden in Switzerland at the time. It was starting to spread. You know, there were no specialized magazines, no specialized radio programs. You didn't have MTV or any other music television station, you know. You had, you had like the charts, you know, the Swiss charts once a week, you know, on the radio. That was the only popular music you got on a regular basis. There was no internet. There was nothing like that. If you wanted to have information on the occult or Satanism, you know, or anything like that, you had to go to a public library, you know, specialized bookstores. There were like one or two in Zurich, Switzerland, specialized in religion and spiritualism, you know. And if you would go there, kid, black leather jacket, something like this, oh, what you got on Satanism, you know, those people looked at you like you're the devil yourself, you know, you could have been glad if they didn't call the police. Nowadays, you can become instant evil in five seconds, you know. It's true, you go on the internet, you know, yeah. like, okay, who's... Doesn't, doesn't take any effort anymore. It, really, you know, and then you go to Hot Topic, oh, what's the evil clothing exactly. season, this, you know, where this season right now, in this, in this country, you know, it's the same world all over. Nowadays, you can just join a scene. Like he says, you go to Hot Topic, half an hour later, you're the perfect goth or metal guy. Back then, you had to actually accomplish it. You had to be part of an underground scene, you had to be part of the tape traders, you had to know these people. You had to first find out... I had to first find out that there's a, a fan scene from California called The Headbanger in which all the hot bands were featured that nobody knew. I had to find out about that through like a million tape traders that, that wrote to each other. Letters would take like 10 days from America to Switzerland. Everything was slow. You had to accomplish something. You had to create the cult. It wasn't just like, you know, you go on the internet, what do, what do I want to be? You know, read up on Wikipedia what, what you want to be and how it's done. <laughs>